As said, my name is Hilmi Abdul Rahim. I am a lecturer for the Game Development Program at KDU University College. And I I'll say it right out, I know nothing about the real money gambling industry. My role here is, as a speaker, I'm going to get him to talk about the industry. And that's what I'm going to do. So, Daniel, can you tell us more about yourself before we start? Um, hi, morning everyone. Uh, those that are awake after the party last night. Um, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Daniel, um, based out of London, originally from Israel. I've been in the industry for the last uh, 11 or 12 years, focusing on games the last eight years. Um, yeah, enjoying, enjoying playing. All right, so what we're going to do here is that Daniel is going to represent Kama Games, and we are just going to talk about several elements in the real money generation industry, real money gallery industry, sorry. So let's start with the most obvious issue, industry saturation. So it's no secret that the industry is very crowded with some top-heavy players such as Playtica, Zynga, GSN. Now, Kama Games, you guys have been in the top 20, 40 social casino for years. How do you guys compete against these giants who can outspend you in UA? <clears throat> um, I think it's important to um, view the social casino industry in perspective. Uh, the industry is fairly young industry, and it's still very much evolving. Um, not so long ago, it was, a, it was a PC desktop kind of industry, very Facebook dependent, um, you know, very hardcore niche kind of audience. And so it's, you know, it's, it's been evolving. Uh, it's becoming more mainstream. Um, a lot of more commonalities with, with the social, sorry, with the, with the casual games. Um, and and it, it is still very much evolving. So this is kind of a very broad view of the, of the, of the industry and where it is. Uh, it's true that the growth uh, that, that, the, uh, the, you know, that the industry has been experiencing for the last, for the last year uh, has, been, has, 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 has slowed down a little bit uh, in, ter in terms of, of growth rate, uh, particularly around uh, being able to acquire uh, users at the rate that the industry has been, has been used to for the last few years. Um, but again, I think, it's, I think that, that it's, it's, it's kind of a temporary thing, and we will s continue to see a lot more things happening in the industry. Now, going back to the question around being able to, to, you know, to, to stay in the industry and compete and mm -hmm. remain relevant, I think you know, there are a lot of players out there in the content, in the publishing, in, in the distribution, uh, in the in the in the you know all areas of the social casino industry, mm -hmm. uh, and Kama Games has been uh, you know in a way lucky to be one of the first guys out there uh, some seven eight years ago and to really position itself uh, at the heart of social casino, at the heart of poker particularly, mm -hmm. um, and and so you know it, it was able to uh, build a loyal uh, fan base. Uh, it was able to build uh, liquidity across the different levels of the game which really help uh, with, you know, with the game experience. Obviously, it has benefits on, on, the, on the commercial side, but um, you know, primarily on the gaming experience. Um, and so, yeah, you know, being, being able to be the first, or to be among the first companies uh, you know, to offer poker uh, for social players, uh, to develop the know-how around live operations, and, uh, and, uh, and to develop the expertise around managing the ecosystem has been, you know, has been key for us to, to maintain this momentum. Um, I think we were, you know, we were, we are still, we're still focusing a lot on, on innovation across our entire portfolio. So we're not only a poker company anymore. We're doing, we're doing other, other games within, within the social casino, you know, space. I think it's about identifying our core value proposition and kind of reinforcing that. I think it goes a lot about perfecting our live operation. Um, and last but definitely not least, it's about, uh, you know, focusing on, on healthy and sustainable growth. All right, so is there room in the industry for smaller players? It's a question I get, I get a lot here. Um, I think it's, it's, it's becoming more and more challenging, definitely if you're trying to, to break through with the, with the multiplayer game, due to the obvious, you know, to the nature of the game. Um, but I think that, that if you have a strong, uh, you know, product proposition, a strong playing proposition, I think that if mm -hmm. you have uh, if you show innovation, if you have experience in live operation, which, are, which, which is key, mm -hmm. and, and, and if you have clear uh, idea what you're going to do around go to market, how you're actually going to distribute your games, I think there is still some room um, uh, you know, in some markets. Yeah. 
So let's crystallize the term smaller players. Uh, in my experience, when I was working in a game company, a console company, my boss once told me that you need a million dollars in order to start a studio. OK, fine, that was 10 years ago. I also spoke with an indie company just last year where they make uh, $1.6 million a year, and when they have an operation cost of $100,000 a month, that works out well. But to just be in this uh, social casino industry, how much money do you need? The short answer is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, again, it goes down to which kind of game you're trying to, to develop and, and, and take into market. I think that developing a, a single-player game is potentially uh, cheaper, but as, as, you know, as, as we will probably um, be speaking about a little bit later, um, all the games within the genre, within the social casino genre, are focusing around you know, deepening and widening the social experience within them. If it's a single player or multiplayer uh, a mechanic, all games are trying to, to you know, reinforce that social proposition and the interaction. And so you need to be able to acquire enough users um, to, 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 you know, to, to keep the game going and to keep the game fun. Um, so I don't think that a million dollars will take you too far. Okay. I think it's, it's significantly more to build a, a, you know, a, 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 a serious business that is going to be uh, among the tops. All right. Now, how do you feel the social custodian industry has moved forward over the past few years? Um, you know, it goes back to, to the industry um, maturing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, definitely you see it in the last two years. Uh, we see a lot more focus on, on optimization. Uh, we see a lot more focus on, on being able to offer uh, promotions and rewards and VIP programs. We see a lot, of more, a lot more integration of, of, of features um, from, from other genres, from uh, MMOs, from RPGs, uh, that kind of you know, are designed in a way to enrich the experience, to take it much wider than just the mm -hmm. casino experience. Right. I think that you know, in many ways the, the social casino industry has been um, successful in establishing itself as a standalone industry as opposed to a subset of the real money gaming industry. All right. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Now, it has been cited that Kama Games does well in the Middle East and U USA. What do you believe is the reason of the success? Um, I think our game design, um, or the simplicity in our game design, a cater for certain demographics, uh, and it's, I think it's been it's been uh, a core to for us being able to uh, you know be successful with, with some audiences. I think mm -hmm. I think we you know being able to offer uh, different levels of the game um, and being able to match uh, to to have a right matching system within the game uh, to improve the gaming experience on the individual level has been has been fundamental in us being able to succeed in those countries. Um, I think, you know, in many ways, those, you know, the, the, the U.S. market being a tier one market uh, is, is very receptive to poker. It mm -hmm. has a very long uh, tradition of, of poker from different kinds. Um, and, and, you know, we were able to tap into that, mar into that market with the right uh, gaming offering. Mm -hmm. Are you looking into markets such as the Asian market and the Latin American market? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the Asian market. Do you see that it is a new blue ocean for the social casino industry? I'm not sure if, if you know if, if it's it's if it's so straightforward to classify it as a red ocean or a blue ocean. I think okay. it's definitely not a blue ocean. I mm -hmm. think there are, there, are, there are you know tons of, of uh, local operators, domestic operators that that, that have uh, very successful, very good games uh, that that been able to um, you know to to build uh, you know a loyal and engaged. Uh, user base, so I definitely won't say it's a, it's a blue ocean. I do think that there's a, there's a lot of room for uh, you know, Western companies to to come to come down here and, and, and kind of learn how to how to uh, further develop their, their their offering and culturalize their game to make it uh, suitable for for local audiences. And, and and again, I think it's it's very difficult to um, to view the Asian market as, as an Asian market. I think right. the region is, is very, you know, that you have so many different markets. China is different and Japan is different and, and you know, and, and South Korea is different, Malaysia is different. So you have different uh, preferences, different audiences, different, um, you know, payment systems, different uh, regulatory frameworks. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, we, we are looking at, at, at the region 
on a, mar on a market uh, by market basis. All right. So moving on, Combine Games apparently have a unique approach to product strategy. Instead of working slot games, you guys focus on table games like poker, blackjack, and roulette. What's the rationale behind this? And has there been pros and cons to this strategy? Um, I mean, the, the company has started originally uh, out of the love and passion for the poker game and, and the belief that the game can be better delivered digitally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're talking about eight years ago, or around eight years ago. So it wasn't as much as a strategic decision, you know, let's, let's view the market, let's analyze the market and see which vertical within it is, is, is easier to penetrate. I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's more of a, you know, we enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, you know, so, so, so it's not so much of a strategy as much as, much as it is just natural evolution. Um, there are strategic elements to how we use, you know, how we use poker as a vehicle for acquisition. Uh, I think that if, you know, if you go back, about, and speaking about uh, our referencing uh, saturation, I think uh, being able to use poker as a vehicle for acquisition in some markets uh, has, has proven successful. Interesting. So in that case, how do your users differ compared to social slot players? Traditionally, it's, you know, slots players are uh, skewed towards female, mm -hmm. whereby poker is more uh, male-oriented. Um, the duration of the session, the gaming experience, the, the, you know, the interaction with others are all different. Um, so, it's, you know, it's, to the most part, those, you know, those different verticals offered different gaming experience to diff that cater or, or are appealing to different uh, demographics significantly. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, you know, we, we see so, some of the new guys coming up with, 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 you know, with slots games that, do, that are able to attract uh, male, male audiences. So I think that, you know, that kind of differentiation is kind of breaking, breaking apart a little bit, falling apart a little bit. Okay, so you guys chose to do a multiple app strategy instead of putting all your games together into one app. What's the reason behind this? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer around you know, a single app or multiple app uh, strategy. Um, for us, you know, for Kama Games, um, being able to deliver products that are you know, wrapping the experiences in a unique way, to streamline the, your, you know, you, to streamline your onboarding process to streamline your ability to sit at the table and play the game. Uh, so, you know, solving some UI issues um, is, is critical. I think that uh, you need to consider technical aspects uh, like file size. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, there's some ASO consideration that you need to, 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 to take into, you know, when, 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 when building your strategy. Um, how much, you know, space on the shelves, on the stores you're taking with multiple apps versus one app and how much you, know, you can compete on different keywords if, if you want to go into tactics. Um, and so you know, for us, a single app with the key feature, which is a, you know, a shared account and a shared wallet, uh, has, been, has, been, you know, uh, has, has brought success. I think that by being able to introduce a single account that you know, essentially allow you, allows you to mm -hmm. uh, carry your profile, carry your chip balance, carry your achievements, carry your friends uh, across the different games within the portfolio um, has, been, you know, uh, has been a very, very good feature for us, very key in our success, I would say. Having said that, I mean, you know, we, we've, we've recently launched a, a full casino app that incorporates the different, uh, the different uh, games into a single app. We're able to do it uh, technically in a way that didn't increase file size uh, significantly. Um, and so, you know, we, we are seeing very positive indications, um, you know, uh, on, on how it serves engagement and retention. So, okay. Yeah. Now, according to our MC, Casey Rock, he cited a report by Alice and Tragic Gaming, which says that poker has been in decline, but social poker has fared well over the last few quarters. What trends are you guys seeing in your social poker product? Um, again, I think... <clears throat> The social casino industry has been establishing itself further and further away from the real money gaming industry. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we are seeing uh, some decline over the last few years with the real money poker um, for various reasons. Um, whereby, you know, we are still seeing growth uh, 
in social in, sorry, in social uh, poker industry, we're definitely seeing, uh, continue to see that growth uh, on our game, on Pokerist. Uh, definitely on, on, the, on the revenue side, but as importantly on, on the active user uh, side. All right. Now, have you had to adjust your strategy at any point over the past few years dealing with changing trends? Um, I mean, of course. <laughs> But it, 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 you know, there are so many strategies to, to cover here. I mean, mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of product strategy, we've diversified our portfolio. In terms of, of user acquisition strategy, we, you know, we went into, into markets uh, where we saw, where we felt that there's an opportunity to, to, to acquire users, um, you know, responsibly, I would say, with well, keeping an eye on ROI. So mm -hmm. there's different strategies and different implications for, for that evolution. Can you pinpoint, say, a trend you noticed and how did it influence you to change your strategy? I think, you know, one, uh, one good example for that is, is the need for uh, a better narrative. Um, and so, you know, players want to have a deeper playing experience, I would say, rather than just two minutes of fun or just an escapism of, you know, from, from their daily stuff. And so being able to introduce tournaments, different types of tournaments to, to cater for that uh, particular need um, is, is a good example probably. Okay, now some social casino games have begun to implement features found in other game genres. So we've seen cross-pollination. Do you believe there are features from other genres that will work well in social casino? And if yes, what are they? Um, we see, you know, I definitely agree with that, with that statement. I think that uh, we're seeing a lot of um, features around you know, that are more skill-based mm -hmm. coming into social casino. We see a lot more competition and emphasis on achievements and profile. Um, I think we're seeing much more, uh, you know, layers, uh, you know, meta games on top of the of the social, so on top of the uh, casino casino mechanics. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that you see being brought or being imported. Mm -hmm. from different uh, genres, more, more, you know, more mainstream genres. Okay, we're going to speed it up because we have like four minutes before we go into questions for the audience. Now, do you believe that bringing these features in will bring in non casino players to try out your games? Um, I think this, this is what we've been seeing for the last uh, year or two. So definitely, you know, definitely yes. I think this is, uh, this is a natural evolution of the, of the industry mm -hmm. uh, as it matures. And I think it's going to uh, help it, uh, you know, widen its audience and moving more, you know, closer to the consensus and the mainstream. Okay. Now, seeing the trends that are rising over the next few years, what predictions do you have on the social casino market and how are you guys preparing for them? Um, I think, like, if, if we need to wrap it in, in, in four points. Yes, we do. Um, <laughs> so it's around optimization for live operation. Mm -hmm. And being able to, you know, run better nurture cycle, run better, um, uh, you know, retention cycle, improving your user acquisition. Uh, Mike, improving your user acquisition skills. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about integration of more skill-based features. I think it's about um, experimenting and exploring new uh, technology platforms, uh, VR, AR, HTML5, um, both, you know, in, in the context of developing. Um, um, adopted gaming experiences as well as distribution channels. Um, and, and, and last but not least, mm -hmm. um, further expansion into Asia. Okay, so let's talk about your competition. So there are traditional competitions, but do you have non-traditional competitors that you have to deal with? When you look, you know, when, when as, as a game developer, um, when you look at, at, at the different things that you do in order to take your products into market. You look at your direct competitors, you know, it's very easy to, to point, you know, WSOP and Zynga as, as, as a couple of that are st stands out there. Uh, but at the same time, we compete on share of wallet, we compete on disposable, disposable income, we compete on media. So, you know, it, that you have those Uber of the world, which are as competitors, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in certain fields as, as what you would consider the more traditional direct competitors. How? Are they competing with you? Like, why would Uber compete with you guys? We are trying to go for the same audience, uh -huh. through the same platforms, through the same networks. Uh, we are bidding 
on the same uh, targeted audiences. Um, and, and you know, Uber maybe is not the best example for, for that particular, for, for the following, uh, for the next particular example, but, you know, at the end of the day, a, you know, prospect user has a certain amount of money that he can spend. Um, and so, there's that show of wallet that you continue to compete on. Okay, so final question from us before we open to the audience. Now, what is the future of VR and AR in the social casino industry? Um, I think it's, you know, it's those early days of, of VR and AR. It's been, it's been, the last couple of years, I think, have been um, stated as the year of VR and AR, and it hasn't happened yet. I think uh, those platforms are perfect for gaming, uh, and they are very well suited for, for social casino as well. Um, we are, as, you know, as a studio, we, we believe in those, in those uh, uh, platforms. We develop our games to uh, work on those platforms, and you know, I, I had a chance to try this in our studio, and it's, the experience is mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're still learning what, you know, what, 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 what we should do, how users will use those headsets and how users will use the different, uh, you know, the different products. Um, there are some questions around how you're going to actually monetize those platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but for us at this point in time, this is, a, you know, this is definitely a secondary question. And getting the, the, the playing experience right is, is our primary objective at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now open the floor for questions. Danny, what uh, opportunities do you see for specifically <coughs> casino game focused operators like yourself to partner with the ever growing list of real money <coughs> land based integrated resorts in Asia specifically? <coughs> um. You know, this, there are so many ways to, to address this, 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 this question. I mean, there's, um, there's definitely some overlap between audiences. Um, there's, there's been an ongoing discussion around being able to, um, to build, uh, you know, a, a rich database uh, and to build channels to further, uh, you know, engage with the users uh, outside, you know, the, 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 the flow of the casino. Um, but these are, you know, this is just partial. Um, it, this is just a, you know, a partial way to look at it. I think there's there's a lot to do with experimenting with new content and rolling out new content um, in a faster way. I think it's um, I think it's about being able to bring your brand uh, and put it in the hands of prospect users, which is something that is key, I believe, for uh, for traditional land-based uh, operators. Awesome. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, are they able to talk to you outside? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you very much.